Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to our Municipal Pooling Authority Wellness Virtual Cooking Class. We have these cooking classes every Thursday from 12 o'clock to 1 p.m. And this week we are doing a clam chowder with a cheesy shrimp bread, right, Mom? Um, you are able to tune into these classes even if you're not able to join the live ones. We have all of our classes recorded and posted to our website at www.mpa-nc.com. Just hit our wellness tab and you'll have access to a wide array of cooking classes and not just cooking classes. You can also find our fitness classes also amazingly hosted by Milan. You will be able to find a whole bunch of different workouts and fun recipes on our website. So without further ado, Milan. It is a... Um pretty uh, simple but yet complicated. It has stages to it. Um, uh, clam chowder can be thrown together in five seconds or you can do it correctly um, and go through the correct stages of doing it. Uh, it's kind of like a spaghetti dish. If you want to pour something out of a jar um, and boil up and boil some noodles, which is you're absolutely welcome to, brown you some ground beef and you'll be done in about uh, 13 minutes. So if you want to do that thing that way, that's absolutely fine. You still get fed. It goes into your body. You eat. However, we're doing things a little bit different. We're gonna go through the proper stages of actually how to make clam chowder. So um, it's more of a little bit more of a process than just uh, throwing some things into a pot. So what we're gonna start off with, we're gonna start off here with our saute. We're gonna start off sauteing. And before we get started with that, we're gonna go over our ingredients. It's pretty simple, not too complicated. Uh, we have our potatoes, which have already been boiled. Um, I haven't cu cut them yet. They've been boiled and cooled and they still have some uh, integrity to them. They're not just, I'm squeezing this pretty firmly. It's not going to just break down because you want to have some bite when it gets actually milled into everything else. Okay. So we have carrots. We have our celery that I'm going to cut for you guys. And we have our shrimp that's going for our bread. And then we have some clams that I've drained. And then we have some smoked clams for a little bit of oomph on there. We might just dash these in there, but we have a clams. And then the twist for me, where did I put my, oh, and we have our cream. We have butter, salted and unsalted butter. Um, so we have traditional, regular butter and then we have unsalted butter. I'm going to meld these two things together um, in two different, at two different times for our, for our bread and for um, the beginning of our trinity here. Last but not least is that I got some fresh mussels. So I like to throw me some fresh mussels in my, my chowder too. So, and then last but not least, our celery that I veined. So I left some whole that's a whole stock, and then I split some down the middle so that that celery will be really fine when we chop it in a second. All right? Just like I veined those, just right at the top, nice slice, right down the middle, just like that. And then come, I've already cut off the, the bottoms. All right, well, let's, let's take all these guys. Let's, let's be efficient here. Let's take all of you guys, make you one big stock. as fluid as I would like, but okay. Let's get those out of the way. So we're going to go slide these, half of them at least, straight into my pot. Now, slide that off to the side for just a second. Next, we want to get our onion going, because it's going to be part of our trinity. All right, so there's not too much to it. The spices are really light. Um, it's just how the texture and how consistent you are with it. All right, so we just want to be really consistent and not let anybody overpower. That's why I'm going to not be too generous with the smoked um, clams because that can change the whole uh, taste of the um, of it. So I might just do half of those because they're really, really smoked. Okay. So let's go ahead with, we have to slice up some more 
we will because I just want this whole board so I don't make an additional mess. And we'll come right down the middle of this onion. Okay. And I like to go face down like that. Now you have some bases to cut. Old school trick I learned in culinary school. Yeah, you just put the onion down. I'm saying you quite seen you've seen uh, everybody on the Food Network show you guys this trick. So everybody knows it now. Um, I don't like that extra little skin out there. You just face it down. You can do one or two. I want this to be pretty small. Stop running away from me like my puppy early this morning. And again, like I said, you don't want anything overpowering anything, so I'm not going to go crazy with these onions. You see how easy I'm doing that, guy? Just keep your fingers out of the way. I know a lot of people have a uh, problem with their knife skills, but it's actually pretty easy not being all uniform because I don't want to look up at the camera at the same time while I'm cutting them down. That show is going to be a whole other show. It's going to be like Food Rescue 911. All right. Nice and easy, just like that. Like Sunday morning. And like that, we don't have any tears. Okay? Get this bad boy out of the way. And then one more, we're going to go with the potato. Just one. You see how consistent that is? What this is going to help me do, for me, this is going to be part of my basis because I'm not really big into the cream, real heavy into the cream. So I have to substitute that cream with a really good stock and liquid that I want to make because I don't want chicken stock or beef stock in my chowder. A lot of people say, you know, a lot of recipes will call for beef stock or chicken stock. I don't want that in my chowder. So what have I done? Majority of the water that comes off of your seafood, I would normally keep, but I went half and half. So I went half canned. Um, the recipe, a lot of these recipes call for the canned ones. I'm not real big on it. So I went half canned. And that water, I don't really want to keep that water. So we're going to be making our fresh, our own with patis. So this is fish sauce, patis. So all of the um, things that were in the canned um, uh, 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 baby clams and all those things, and even the water that came off of the fresh um, scallops, really not a big fan of that. And we're going to use so little of it that it's not even going to change the color and the texture of what we're doing. And one more thing that I've seen that I did see a variation of, and I want a little bit more vegetables in this, is I did see the clam chowder with a, with tomatoes. So right at the end, I'm gonna add fresh tomatoes with this one and cilantro right on the top. That's gonna be another variation on it. Um, just because I like vegetables in my stuff and I want a little bit more vegetables and I like that fresh gardeny taste. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna also throw in some of my carrots. I, now that I have my uh, food processor, I'm not a big fan of buying Julian carrots already. So I just buy my own carrots now and just chop them. I haven't figured out how to make how to do it with my machine. So we will be getting there soon, but I like the way they broke down here for the simple fact it's going into my um, chowder. It's going to look really, really nice with that. Look at that. Look at all those beautiful colors right there. Right? And this is something that's really, really rich and creamy. So what I'm going to do with this, thank God I have a slew of it, and we don't want this on the um, – on the cheesy bread because we want the cheesy bread to have all that flavor. So we're going to put that big old clump right there. That's unsalted butter, guys. Unsalted butter. All right. Now we're going to crank up that heat. I know I'm doing this in reverse, but it's not in actuality because in a way, it's somewhat of a soupy stew. So we're going to cook this down. We're going to get this rolling. And I 
I'm going to add a little bit of my really good olive oil that my daughter was doing her hair treatment with. Not actually her hair, but she used my stuff to use for her hair, her hair uh, stuff because it called for really good olive oil. I said, you better go get you some 99 cent store olive oil putting it on your hair. Do they even sell olive oil at the 99 cent store? Because olive oil, honestly, if you think about it, the base of olive oil is olive oil. So how are they really cheap and good olive oil? The process can be, yes. But the actuality, it's like buying, listen, let me give you another point or two. Clorox, don't buy like Clorox bleach. Clorox is Clorox. Buy Clorox off brand. Save yourself some money. Certain things you can just you just need to buy just off brand. It makes no sense to buy a name brand like Clorox. Absolutely not one of those things. You need to buy name brand Clorox or bleach. Bleach is bleach. I keep saying Clorox, but I buy the like to my Spanish people. I don't know the name of it, but no disrespect, but I don't know the name of it. It's like the Spanish Clorox or whatever version of it. It's just like I don't know what it says, but. <laughs> All right, so I got medium heat. I got my patis. In substitute of all of the uh, water that comes on the other uh, seafoods, I am going to use the fish, the uh, the, the uh, water from the shrimp, though. I trust that water, so I'm going to pour it right there on the butter. And I'm going to take the rest of the shrimp water. Okay, I'm going to pour the rest of the shrimp water in there. If I have any of the last retaining little residual of the clams coming up the muscle, a little muscle water. Because these have been rinsed and strained, because these are fresh and those are fresh. The canned ones, I'm not going to do that to. So we got our bread here. And then as a thickener, I'm gonna use two things. I'm gonna use the potatoes as a natural thickener. I'm gonna almost mash that one potato up and kind of use it like that. It's a little trick. loving it. Now I'm going to add in my very few spices that I am going to have in here. And we're going to go with garlic, black pepper, and I believe I did this one with either Italian seasoning or basil. I'm almost positive I did it with basil. I wasn't time. I'm sorry, I have so many recipes, guys, that it just dip, dip, dip. But I promise I will get better. Or not. Because once you start being all super, 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 super specific, I like it for you guys. But like I said, I'm a shaker. However, I do want to get some nicer uh, shakers for this. So I don't have these big old things coming out every time I have to add something in. I would like that. Now what I'm going to do is the unsalted butter is going... Okay, and if you, well, you're not here to say it, if you've noticed, when it, when I first started cooking this, you really smelled the, the patis, the fish paste, that has completely cooked off that fast, and I didn't add that much, and they, they understand, what this, this is like kind of like, a, like truffle oil, less is more, if you've ever cooked with truffle oil or anything like that, yeah, you want to make sure that you're being extremely humble with that. Now we're going to come over here to our cream. Understand, this is going to be added again into the big bowl. Ah. Ah. Ah, there we go. It's like opening up champagne. It's like I don't know what I was doing. All right, just about two tablespoons. Just to get this going, this is not in, by any means the actual soup. This is my breakdown. This is my way of making it so that I don't have to have a lot of cream. All 
right? My non cream, super creamy. Isn't that beautiful? That's gorgeous, right? That is beautiful. All right. First round down. Now I'm going to come back. Where is my water? Ah, thought I had a water at room temp. Just put these in. Oh, you want room temp. And actually, I'm going to cook that down before I start adding. You guys are going to love what I'm about to do right here. See how that worked? Yeah, buddy. Yes, buddy. All right. So here it is right here. I kept it on top. It's so big. I'm making a ton of this because I am going to devour this one. Absolutely one of my favorite dishes. So I am going to devour this. And this is my birthday weekend. So this is going to be the appetizer probably for the weekend, or at least for the next day and a half, because I'm probably going to be cooking the entire time. Yeah, my birthday and I do all the cooking. All right. So we're going to transfer this over. And let that start to simmer on this side. And just we're going to keep adding to it. Watch how beautiful this is. And this is the proper way to make chowder. All right. Now with that going, we're going to come over here. And I love that these are twin pots. They're, they're, the, the, the tops match. So one top can go. See that? Love it. So we come over here. We take, now we're gonna come into our other side of the dish. This is the fun part for me because I get to meld the rest of the scallops and the onions and all that together and start putting it into the big pot, and having fun with it. So what we're gonna do now is really quickly, I'm gonna pop over here. I'm gonna chop up the rest of this onion real quick, guys. And again, I want to look at you, but I want my fingers. So we're going to, all right. I like my fingers. All right. So get this going. And we have those goodies floating around in the bottom of this uh, pot right here, right? The rest of those goodies. And thank God I kept my water out as room temp now. So before I add that, now we do want a little bit of the, I use the whole thing on that side. Got to grab this real quick. We do want to add some butter to this. And I say some butter, you guys are going to look at me like, what? I thought you said some, not the whole world of butter. But yeah, we're going to add a kaglam of this. Oh, again, unsalted butter, guys. So don't feel too bad. That didn't just happen. Cool. All right. Just come off that water to start spilling down. Gotta add these carrots. All of them. It's down a little bit. Okay, cool. I caught it in time. Good. Catastrophe averted. Now, let's get the rest of this celery in there. We don't want to leave that out. Slam them over. Don't be shy, slam them over. Slam them over. There you go. Make some turn, baby. Make some turn. 
You want to get all of that goodness at the bottom. Now we're going to go with our olive oil. And then guess who comes to the party? Scallopines. Oh, yeah. All that good juice and water in there. Oh, they love it. And the beautiful thing about scallops is they have some sweetness to them. And everything left on this block, is coming to my party. I want those all those guys invited to my party. Everybody's invited to my party. Okay, including the cream. There we go. Because we do not want to bruise those scallops. We want those scallops to stay nice, but they got to still cook. And we're going to put them, add them in at a low temp because we still got the, the clams and the um, potatoes. And again, a lot of people will have the potatoes already going, not me. I want the texture of my potato. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take my potato, one, two, and then I'm just going to go down the side. That's it. See how that's perfectly cubed, just like that? Perfect. Open this top. Chowder is in full effect. Quick stir, make sure we have nobody's at the bottom. Beautiful, we know nobody hanging out at the bottom. We got everything in full effect right now, guys. I love it. Hey, right. you go over the top with your herb. Yes. Your garlic, and again, no salt because we did the salt in the patisse and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of patisse right now into this because again, you want everybody to stand up, but nobody stand out. So let me even be safer with that. Look, look at the amount that I put in here, guys. It's like a fourth of this um, tablespoon. That's it. Literally, that's it. Turn that all the way down. Actually, that's going completely off. That's off. Top on that, push that back. Come back over here, get my rest of my potato going with a lot more result. All the potato goes in. Last one, slip down the middle, turn it. Slice it down the top. Okay, can you guys see that? I know it's kind of hard. And then right there. All right. Potatoes go in. Beautiful. Now, we take here. Gotta get rid of this. Take that top off. We're gonna need that top in just a second. Take both of our gloves, safety first. We like our fingers. Look at that. Oh yeah. That goes in right on the top. Right on the top, guys. Just like that. Mm -mm -mm. Beautiful chowder. Now we take the rest of our cream. And get happy with it. Don't forget we have one more ingredient to add. And then the tiny bit of the herbs. So now we let it stew while we get our bread going. So we take this, give it a stir. Okay, and then right at the end, we're gonna add in our clams. 
let everything meld together. And we'll go one more round on our spice. We'll go here. And that, th this is when they say um, salt to taste is because you want the, the person that's eating your food at this point to go ahead and put that last bit of flavor on there. You've done, you've taken it to Flavor Town. Now, if they want some salt on it, that's on them. But you've taken it to Flavor Town already. Crunk that just a tiny bit. Put the top on there. And now I'm going to make some space. This one's in, in uh, Half Moon Bay. I think I've told you guys about it quite a few times. They got the crabby cheesy bread. And because I'm having crab over the weekend for my birthday, I said, hey, why don't we try it with shrimpy cheesy bread? And I think it's going to work out perfect because we're going to take this, put this on 500. Get that started and this is only going to take a second so what you're going to do is you're going to get your bread all right beautiful piece of bread camera's clean this is how we do it this is how we do it all right just like that or maybe not i need a i need an a bread cutting knife and there's a bread cutting knife serrated right tool for the right job look how much easier that is all right so let's just come on down i'll make a mess for a second beautiful piece of bread all right and i'm using both pieces of this i'm using both pieces of this beautiful bread right here here i'm working over here guys now so let's just this piece of butter, like that, and I'm going to come over here with the salted, because we need both of them. We need both of the butters, okay? Now we come over here and we get this. I'm going to put this right on top of that one. And this one has been out, so it's a nice, beautiful room temp, almost creamy. So we're going to do that with both. Put that in there, and I say 10 seconds. All right, and while that's going, and while that's going, we're going to take this bread. And we're just going to slightly, slightly, slightly hollow it out. Just slightly. Not a whole lot. Just hollow it out, just like that. Just hollow it out. Same thing on this side. Ever so lightly. Just hollow out the bread. Okay. And I love this doughy, 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 doughy part. So there's no way on earth I'm getting rid of that. I love that part of the bread. All right. So now I got my butter here. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a layer of herbs. Dry right on top of the bread. No anything. So right on top of the bread. I'm gonna go herbs. Just like that. Get this out of the way. Then with my melted, half melted butter, I got that little block in the middle. I'm gonna kind of pour this ladle this ladle this on like that. Just gonna ladle it on. Not too much, because this is going in the oven and we don't want it to um, go through. So just gonna ladle that on. And then we want to get on the outsides of the bread so we get a nice crust everywhere. Just like that, kind of getting that. You see how I'm doing this? This is art over here, right? Just like that. 
And then we're gonna come with our shrimp, pour our shrimp right in the middle. Just like that. Then we come with our herbs one more time. Now that was basil and the, the Italian style, and I'm gonna come with basil. And I am going to come with my garlic powder. You understand all that butter is on there and then we're gonna go for one more layer of butter. I'm just gonna pour this down either one of these. A little pour for you and a little pour for you. Then we come over here to the moss. So now we're gonna reach in here. This should already be nice and hot. I'm sorry guys, I had this as an eyesore sitting in front of you. This should be nice and hot. Right? We're gonna put these bad boys right on there. Yeah, buddy! All right, now we're gonna come over here. Open this cheese up, some beautiful mozzarella. And because I'm not gonna make a mess in my kitchen with this cheese, you wanna come really quickly, grab some foil, and lay a foil base down underneath and we slide this in. Eh, I'll do it right here. That hot. Yeah, that's pretty hot. No mistakes allowed. Put that right there. We don't want the cheese to drip, that's all. I just don't want a messy um, stove after I'm done doing this beautiful dish. All right. And then we just go humbly down the middle. <laughs> humbly down the middle with the cheese. Humbly down the middle with the cheese. Ever had cheesy crabby bread, shrimpy crabby bread, and not be bad. All right, now this goes into the oven for about five or six minutes at 500. Boom. And now we come back over here. We give this a stir. Got a mess going on over there. We're gonna give this a stir. Yes, buddy. We're gonna crank it a tiny, tiny bit. Give it a taste. We're in the race. Now it's time to really bump it. Dump it. And like I said, because these are so heavy, let's go with half. Give it a stir. And because we've added no, absolutely no salt, I'm sorry, it needs it. With that being said, I'm gonna add a little bit of so much seafood. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon pepper. Okay, and let's bring it back. Those chunks of potato in here are like absolutely gorgeous. I hope you guys can see in there really good. Those big old chunks of potato. And I'm not a big celery fan, but when it comes to this, celery is like my best friend. 
absolutely love celery in my um, clam chowder. And actually, I wish I would have put a little bit more. Let's give this a taste just to see what we've added. That's a shadow to be old. Let's wait till that bread is done and we'll wrap all this up. Let's slide this out of the way. It's, we add a little bit of salt, but for texture is I really, really, really enjoy a douse of the parm. I really should have put this in on the recipe, but that's gonna thicken that bad boy up and bring him right to where I like it. You see the mess I've made here on my, on my stove? Thanks, guys. Yeah, buddy, that is a hearty, hearty chowder right there. Now, you see how a proper chowder is done in stages? You really want to separate so that you get those all those flavors. I was really, really humble with the salt today, um, but I should have been a little a little bit more with the salt, but we can always say hey to salt. Oh yeah, it takes no time for this crabby cheesy bread to get going, and I'm sorry, this is going to be your guys' new go-to, and you notice how I even layered the crabby cheesy bread. I asked for the lady for the recipe when um, I was out there in Half Moon Bay, and they wouldn't give it to me. Well, they kind of gave it to me. I told you the story already. They kind of gave it to me. Um, but I just kind of dissected it very carefully to see how they layered it. Because there's no way to get that much flavor by doing it just on the top. So I was like, oh, they got to have done it. All right. But again, this dish, this kind of dish, I mean, you can, like I say, you can spaghetti this dish if you, if you have to. If the kids are saying, I want clam chowder and you want to make it from scratch, you can absolutely spaghetti style this dish. You can, you know, but up, up, you know, straight drum it. But up, but up. But if you would have the time and you want to make it a little bit more quality, and you want those layer flavors to be layered, it, kids don't care. They they just they want to eat it because they don't care about the complexity of the layers of flavors. But if you're serving it to you know a dinner party or something like that, you might want to take a little bit more time. And this is actually a fun dish to cook with people. All right. Bread is done. Look at this, guys. I'm just hold on to your hat. I'm serious. Like it's, it's ridiculous. It didn't. The, the uh, stove didn't even get the chance to get to 500 because the only thing we want to do is melt that cheese. Everything else is already done. That butter and everything. We just want that to meld together. And this is what you get. Now that let's have, let's let it go a little bit longer. I want that cheese to melt a little bit more. Let's let that cheese look a little bit more, like two more minutes. Let's go with a little flavor today on the bowl. Oh, a little jazzy bowl. I don't even know what this bowl is, where this, this is probably my daughter's bowl. It's a little jazzy bowl there. Let's get us a fun little ladle. A ladle of love. We want a ladle that has everything. We don't want a ladle that goes through. We want a nice big scoop of the goodness. All right. <clears throat> and then there, you like that, a nice crust of bread. Yes, a nice crust of bread. All right, so I say everything is done. You guys seen the way to make a proper chowder. You've got a beautiful twist on how to make crabby cheesy bread, but not crabby bread, shrimpy bread. Only thing you're gonna do is just do the crab, and then I would honestly soak. I would soak my um, crab in butter before I put it on there. I'm serious. This is an indulgent thing, you know. This is um, the chowder is extremely healthy, but the bread, two slices, it's indulgent. Oh, that smells like two heavens. Oh, look at that bread, guys. Look at that bread. Look at that bread. All right, so let's go for a ladle of the soup. Let's turn this there. We're okay with that. Beautiful, beautiful soup. No sticky at the bottom. Look at that, guys. How can you beat that? Mm. 
Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And then let's get the look, Piston Vapor's bones as we come over here. Get our shopping block. <laughs> and that, and now now it goes off at 500, right? And we're already done. Thank you, stove. All right, let's get some bread chopping here. We'll save that for later. We want the good stuff right now. Oh my goodness, yes. Guys, that's what I'm talking about. Beautiful, cheesy, crabby bread. Ridiculous. There it is. Clam chowder with cheesy garlic bread. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate my people that helped me out here. Got to get it going today. But I appreciate you sticking by me. Love you guys. And we'll get this straight now. See you soon.